Let's have a discussion about sharpening our tools. There's nothing more important to a woodworker than a good sharp tool. Now we'll focus in on this fingernail grind because it's one of the more modern, most versatile gouges that we have. And if you can sharpen this tool, you can sharpen just about any other woodworking tool. Let's have a closer look. This is how we've drawn it here. There's my flute and it's pointed in that direction. There's my bevel and there's my cutting edge, my sweep. Okay, this is what I'm looking at in a well-designed tool. Now my bevel angle here and my sweep angle are at 45 degrees. This is 90, so half of that is 45. That's a good place to get started. I normally advocate a little sharper bevel than that, but for getting started, 45 is gonna be just fine. I want my sweep or my cutting edge to be straight and my bevel here to be concave. That'll naturally happen because that's the arc of the grinding wheel that causes causes that concave surface. This whole surface here will be concave. Let's go ahead and grind one. A word about the grinder. I prefer a grinding wheel that is 8 inches in diameter and I like the grinder to spin at about 1800 RPMs. The grinding stone is also very important for the types of tool steels that we grind. The ones that come with the grinder probably are better at sharpening axes and lawnmower blades than they are at high speed steels like the ones we use. Your wood turning supply house will direct you to the proper stones that you need for your grinder. And I also suggest a aftermarket tool rest here that's much wider than the ones that normally come with a grinder. It gives you a lot more control when you're grinding your tools freehand. On my grinder here, I have a 46 grit wheel here on the right side that does all my rough grinding. And I have an 80 grit here that does the finer grinding for finishing up. Well, when I first get a new tool, I don't know what the factory has given me as a bevel. So I'll test it to see with this compass. And we'll put that straight edge down the middle of the flute. And it'll read out here on the top. And this one says 45 degrees. That's exactly where I want it. Now to set my platform, I'm going to guess where it is. And I'm going to drop a known angle at 45 degrees and make sure that the bevel and the nose of the tool are in complete contact. That tells me that my platform here is at 45 degrees. That's exactly what I want. You can see that the bevel makes full contact with the grinding stone. Okay, it's really important to understand where to hold the tool when I grind. I will not hold the handle because if I held the handle, I'd have a temptation to lift the tool up without noticing it, and that would change my bevel angle. So I'll hold the handle, or I'll hold the tool above the ferrule here, and have both hands above the handle. Now. I'm going to lay the tool flat on the rest and I'll bring it up to meet the sweep here all the way across and I consistently hold the tool against the platform. That way I have a consistent bevel all the way across. Now it does require a steady hand in order to make this happen. That's a little bit of practice and perseverance on your part. Now let's turn this on, make sure our platform is good and sturdy. Let's grind the nose of the tool. There we go. Let's get to the wing. And I drop the handle. Now I notice that there's a, a burning red spark that's right on top of the cutting edge. That tells me I've met the cutting edge. So what I like to do is I like to hit the heel of the bevel on the grinding wheel first and then roll the, the cutting edge into the grinder. And once I have that cutting surface hot and red, I drop it down to meet another surface so I don't turn it blue. There we go, now I'm on the cutting edge. And I drop the handle to meet a new surface. And roll it to the nose. Now that's a nice fresh cutting edge. A little close up look. I put the heel of the gouge against the grinding wheel and then roll it into the cutting edge and then we'll see a hot spark on the cutting edge. There we go. 
And that tells me I'm on the cutting edge. I'm going to drop the tool handle down. Very steady, consistent pressure. And there we go. Nice fresh cutting surface right there. And my sweep is straight. That's exactly what I want. Let's do the other side. The heel of the bevel makes contact first. Roll it into the cutting edge. There we are. Now I'm sharp. Drop the tool handle. All the way to the nose. Now I blend it in a nice consistent bevel. All the way through. Well, the longer the sweep is on the tool, the higher the tool will have to be brought up to present it to the cutting surface. Whereas with a traditional grind that doesn't have any sweep at all, can be held virtually perpendicular to the wheel and be brought around to meet the cutting surface. Let's take a closer look here at our fingernail grind. The reason we've swept back the wings here in the first place is it makes the tool more versatile. However, it doesn't cut as cleanly as a traditional grind. Now the traditional grind here has virtually no sweep at all. The problem with this tool is it doesn't get us very much access into our working area. But we'd rather have steeper wings like this because it generally gives us a cleaner cut and it handles end grain fibers better than a fingernail grind. Let's have a discussion here about spindle gouges. Typically spindle gouges have a shallow flute whereas bowl gouges are much deeper. They also have a very sharp bevel and a very sharp sweep and that gets us into very tight surfaces when we work with them. Spindle gouges are also good for bowls whereas bowl gouges aren't generally good for spindles. It's also very important to clean our wheel. We can't let anything build up on that wheel. We'll use a little cleaner here. And I'll go straight across and clean that. Keep the wheel straight, nice and flat. Let's sharpen our scraper now. The scraper only requires about a 70 degree bevel here, much duller than the fingernail grind. So I'll manipulate my platform so those two areas meet the uh, bevel and the, and the scraping surface and right there this is one of the easiest tools to grind now I'm going to keep the scraper right flat on the platform and just move it across the scraping surface there and give myself a nice burr over the top edge there real quick easy maneuver once the bevel set it only takes a second. There we go. And the way I know it's sharp is I can feel a burr right over the top. Let's sharpen our traditional grind. It too has a bevel of 45 degrees, which I constantly adjust depending on the depth of my bowl. I have the platform set at 45 degrees, so I keep it hard on the rest. And this too is a very easy gouge to grind because I don't have to rotate the tool up this way or that way. I could just keep it perpendicular to the wheel and just roll the tool around until I hit the whole cutting surface. Nice fresh edge all the way around.